Calvin, uh, 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 Calvin, uh, uh, uh Burn. Well, it's Burn something. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Burnside. Empty your pockets. Hold it. Okay, now profile. That's him, the big dumb one. <laughs> I got a rough idea something's gone wrong. I'm going to kill that colonel. that might be right for you. Oh, uh, what is that, Calvin? It's a outdoor work, good pay, start at the top. No, that is a little misleading. I called him up and it turned out to be painting gas tanks over New Jersey. <laughs> well, here's another ad here. Now, let me get a focus on it. Watch it there, Calvin. <laughs> yeah. This employment can be dangerous even if you're just reading about it. <laughs> Your wife, Maggie Bell, and her sister really laid down the law about you getting a job, huh? Yeah, the charming ladies has been leaving little hints around the apartment. Yesterday, they padlocked the icebox on me. Well, you aren't going to let them force a retired southern gentleman like you into the jaws of employment, are you? No, no. Now, I look at it this way. Hello, Colonel Montgomery J. Claxon speaking. Hmm. Uh, what's that? Oh, you can't. What'd you have? Oh, no. Oh, no. What's the matter, Colonel? That was my wife, Maggie Bell. She and her sneaky sister went out and got a job for me starting tomorrow. They sold the old Colonel down the river of employment. <laughs> You loafer. Don't you scream at me. Don't you scream at me not to scream at you. Don't you scream at my sister while she's screaming at you. Don't you scream at me while I'm screaming at my wife. Quiet! <laughs> help you! Help me! Help me! Driving trucks and delivering television sets is beneath my dignity as a southern gentleman. Ha! Anything heavier than ten pounds is beneath your dignity. <laughs> Good morning, ma'am. You lose this job, Montgomery, and out you go for good. We'll throw you out lock, stock, and mandolin. You can't threaten Colonel Montgomery J. Claxon. We Claxon stood fast at Antietam, Shiloh, Gettysburg, and Chicago. Sure was a short war, wasn't it, sister? <laughs> Shook loose a thought from the old Colonel Cerebellum here. I ought to get someone to lift them heavy television sets for me. Someone with a strong back and a weak mind. Huh. Hey, you like that? I describe my good friend Calvin Burnside. <laughs> Joe, this is the way that Ed Sullivan got started. Sure, now let's get moving here, boy. Look out there. Watch it, watch it there. I either pop my pancreas or slip my sacred iliac here. <laughs> 
<laughs> How is that? Okay, but I think you overstraightened me. Now my shoelaces are too tight. <laughs> Never mind that. Go in that drugstore, call the boss at the TV store, and find out where our next pickup is. I better stay here and rest up. Let me check the headlines here and see who the government's giving our money away to this week. <laughs> oh, by the way, Calvin, the phone number is Plaza 4321. Plaza 4321. Plaza 4321. Harold's Television Service. Uh, I'm calling for Colonel Claxon. Is that you, you big dummy? No, sir. This is his friend. I'm a different big dummy. <laughs> the colonel wants to know where the next pickup is. I got a set to be picked up over at 1431 Riverside Drive, Apartment E. Tell him to get right on it. Uh, Roger. We'll go. Over and out. One, four, three, one, Riverside Drive, apartment E. I wish I had a pencil. I think I can remember that. One, four, three, one, Riverside Drive, apartment E. Why, Calvin Burnside, how are you? Uh, one, four, uh, 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 how to do? <laughs> You remember me. I'm Gladys, the waitress at the 330 Club. Uh, the 330 Club? Yes, on 136th Street. <laughs> One, four, three, one, Riverside Drive, apartment E. Is there something wrong? Oh, no. Calvi, why don't you give me a ring sometime? I've got a new number. New number? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Instead of Monument 9999, it's been changed to Morningside, 7796. Mm, yeah, Morningside, 7796. Uh, I'll call you, honey. Bye now. I'll just give that address to the colonel. Now, what was that number again? Calvin, I was just checking on the Lucky Buck contest in the newspaper here. <laughs> The winning number today is 555-6321-L. 555-6321-L. Oh, yeah. Uh, we got any pickups? Uh, yeah, Colonel. We got to pick up a TV set at, uh, uh... 9999 Morningside Drive, Apartment L. <laughs> You sure you got that right, Calvin? Of course I have. I memorized it right after I ran into that little chick from the 1431 Club. After the bowl is over, after the break of moan, after the dancers leave him, the stars have gone. Back here, Sam, says the two. That shows me, Maggie. I was just recalling when I was the belle of the ball back in Nashville. I declare, I had more gentlemen friends than the South had bull weevil. Oh, sister, I feel kind of sad. You know, this week is Montgomery's birthday. Mm. I'd feel sad, too, if I was married to a shank-sprung old foof like that. Well, he didn't really get foofed up till I had him a while. You're forgetting what a four-flusher he always was. I remember when he was caught in you. All his talk about his big plantation. Well, he did have that old southern mansion. Ha! That's the first old southern mansion I ever saw where there's smoked hams in the living room. <laughs> I think I ought to get him something for his birthday. I just know he's gonna do all right on this television job. Don't you believe it, Maggie Bell. Ha! He'll find a way to get himself fired before the week's out. <laughs> Oh, 
did do. Uh, excuse me, ma'am, but uh, I'm Calvin Burnside. That's with a big B. And uh, we've come here to pick up your little old television set. My television set? Yeah, this is 9999 Morningside Drive, Apartment L, isn't it? Yes, but... Well, we got an order to pick up a set here, honey child. Well, I guess my husband called you from the office and forgot to tell me. Hmm, husband, huh? Where's the set, madam? Right in here. How come all married women have got husbands? <laughs> there it is. It's got TV, a tape recorder... FM, AM, Hi-Fi, Record Changer, Monaural, and Stereo. You know, it makes me self-conscious being in a room with a machine that's smarter than I am. Well, I have to go shopping now. You will be careful, won't you? Uh, uh, uh. They calls me Careful Calvin. Don't worry about a thing, lady. Ah, nice-looking girl there, Calvin. Yeah, she looks like a toothpaste tube that's been squeezed in all the right places. <laughs> Never mind that. You get a grip on the set there, and I'll be right with you. Mm. Well, I knew television was getting pretty crummy, but I didn't know it had sunk this low. It's me. Get out of here. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Now, I got this in. Now, you go around and lift up your end. Okay. Alley up. <laughs> Keep coming. Watch where you're going. I can't see over this thing. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Something just shook hands with my backbone. <laughs> that must be the doorknob. Open it up and we'll get this thing out in the hall. Keep coming. Keep coming. All clear, four and a half. Easy now. Oh, hold it, Colonel. What's the matter? We backed ourselves into a closet. I can't see my face in front of my hands here. <laughs> well, uh, feel around for the doorknob. Yeah, I'll feel around and... I got it. Hmm. Show is cold. Get your head off my nose, will you? I thought that was kind of wet for a doorknob. <laughs> uh oh What? There is no doorknob. Listen, Calvin, we got to get out of here. Now, stand aside, dummy. I'm going to get a running start at that door. One. Two. I just found a... Three. Don't I? <laughs> Calvin, what are you trying to do to me? If I mess up this job, Maggie Bell and her sister are going to book me into the Faxi Award for an unlimited engagement. <laughs> I wonder if Ed Sullivan got this bruised up learning television. <laughs> oh, shut up and let's go here. <laughs> All right, keep coming. Uh, I'll keep coming. I'll hold it, hold it. There's the stairs. Yeah, they is mighty steep stairs. It's going to take us a long time to get this big set down that Grand Canyon. Uh, nothing to it, Calvin. We'll have it down in a jiffy. Now, I'll go first. All right, keep coming. Uh, I'll keep coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. You know, Colonel, it didn't take us as long to get down here as I thought it would. <laughs> you big dummy, look at that pile of junk. Yeah, that is the loosest TV set I've ever seen. I don't think Mr. Harold's gonna like this. Now listen, it was a legitimate accident. He's got insurance, and if we play our cards right, we might even get workman's compensation out of this mess. <laughs> I'll go fool Mr. Harold and tell him what happened. Yeah, and in the meantime, what should I tell the woman if she comes back? Don't tell her nothing, Calvin. Just act dumb. Mm, well, 
Well, if I put my mind to it, I think I can act reasonably stupid. <laughs> TV repair. Oh, uh, Mr. Howell, uh, this is Colonel Claxon. Oh, is it really you this time or that other dummy? No, no, this isn't him. This is the head dummy. Uh, <laughs> and I've got something to ask you, Mr. Howell. Well, I got something to ask you. When are you going to pick up that TV set? Well, we, uh, uh, about... The man's been waiting at his apartment all afternoon. Well, uh, Mr. Howell, you're not talking about the set at 9999 Morningside Drive apartment there, lawyer. Of course not. I'm talking about the set at 1431 Riverside Drive, Apartment E. Uh, excuse me, Miss Harold. Uh, could you repeat that? Uh, your words slipped past my eardrum before I could get a grip on them. 1431 Riverside Drive, Apartment E. Hmm. I wonder if workman's compensation covers the ears. Well, Miss Harold, uh, I'll get right over there and pick it up. Now, how you like that? Calvin and me picked up the wrong set. We were doing all right until we got the television set out in the hall. And then... Uh, watch it there, Oliver. You practically uh, hunt yourself into a fractured skull. <laughs> anyway, uh, the television set ended up busted into a million pieces. As your counselor, I can only advise you to do what any law-abiding, intelligent, substantial member of the community would do. Uh, what is that? Hide out till the whole thing blows over. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fine, but uh, our Calvin is waiting over there with the busted set. He don't know what's happened. Oh, I dare say by the time they book him, he'll realize that his digital extremities have been gripping the burlap. Huh? That the boob's been left holding the bag. <laughs> Calvin, uh, 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 Calvin, uh, 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 Burn, well, it's Burn something, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Burnside. Empty your pockets. Give me your right hand. <laughs> Hold it. Okay, now a profile. <laughs> That's him, the big dumb one. <laughs> I got a rough idea. Something's gone wrong. I'm going to kill that colonel. You get an axe and I'll get a saw and we'll cut off the legs of my sister-in-law. Montgomery, oh, what did you say about my sister? Uh, nothing, nothing, honey. Just humming to myself, that's all. We're going out and do some shopping. How do we look? Yes. Aren't these new short skirts attractive on me and sister? Well, I don't like to criticize, but your kneecaps have always been kind of bony. Well, I've seen smoother joints on a drain pipe. One more crack like that and your teeth will be grinning at us from behind the radiator. Ah, uh, yes, Maggie Bell, honey. We'll be back after a while. Oh, uh, by the way, that stupid lawyer of yours called and said to tell you that Calvin was out. What does that mean? Well, I don't have the least idea, sweet lamb. Calvin's out? <laughs> Don't just stand there, dummy. Give me a hand. <laughs> If that big, stupid Calvin ever got in here, he'd turn me into Colonel Burgess. He's gonna... He's gonna... 
the thing is, uh, he, uh, va, de, va, va, uh, <laughs> Are you in there, Colonel? <laughs> Montgomery, I'm really going to work on that face of yours. I'm going to close everything that's open and open everything that's closed. <laughs> you certainly are thorough, aren't you? Listen, I had to pay that woman $300 for the TV set before that judge sprung me out of that iron motel. And I'm taking it out of your hide. Ah, wait a minute. You wouldn't hit a man with a bad liver, would you? You haven't got a bad liver. Oh, no. I had one for lunch. Oh. <laughs> Time. <laughs> All right, go ahead, hit me, Yankee. Yankee, I'm from the same town as you are. Go ahead, trample on the stars and the bars. <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't do that. Turn your back on Stonewall Jackson, the boys in gray, the magnolias, the chitlins, the corn pone, and everything that we hold sacred as Southern gentlemen. But, Colonel... Hats off. They're coming down our street. <laughs> Civil War sure comes in handy, doesn't it? Montgomery, we're home. Where are you, Lammy Pie? Lammy Pie? How come you smiling? I haven't seen you grin like that since the lawyer read your papa's will. We're so proud of your new job, Montgomery, that sister and I bought you a little present. Birthday present? Why, sweetheart, I'm touched. Look at the way my tear ducts are puckering up there. Stand back there before they squirt all over you. We ran into your friend Calvin on the street. And he sold us a wonderful combination television set for three hundred dollars. Yeah, yes. And he's delivering it right now. Come in, Calvin. Well, here's your birthday present, Colonel. Let me pour it out here for you. Oh, no! Hey, Colonel, here's a good job in the paper. Deck hand wanted on municipal yacht. <laughs> Local cruises only. No, no, Calvin. Don't fall for that one. I answered that once. That's a job on a garbage scow shoveling swirl into the ocean off Sandy Hook. <laughs> uh, hello, Colonel Montgomery J. Claxon Real Estate. Uh, what's that? You want to look at that property up in Piney Manor? Yeah, well, I guess I could get my car out and take you up there. Then we could park it and walk up that hill and then wade through that stream and climb down into that canyon. And then, uh... You know something, mister? You got your nerve disturbing me in the middle of the morning like this. Now look, you fathead. Call some other real estate agent. Don't bother a couple of busy men like us. I really told that fellow off, didn't I, Calvin? Uh, Calvin. I uh, say, Calvin. Uh, hey. Calvin and the Colonel was brought to you by...